I've had some requests for some help with how to tackle these 25 mark essay questions. Um, the issue I think appears to be that there isn't a standard way of doing it. I think when you do essays, perhaps for business or for economics, it can often be quite prescriptive and you can use um, kind of scaffolding ideas um, to get yourself going. With our um, A-level accounting, questions it's not quite that straightforward so there are a number of ways of tackling it so I just put together this little document um, just to hopefully give you some ideas um, about how to tackle it um, but you know there's, there's more than one way to do it so the first thing you have to identify you have to read through the question very carefully um, and identify what the problem is identify what it is you're being asked to do is it to weigh up two different options is it just to assess something is it to, um, you know, for example, look at the liquidity of a business? You might be given some ratios and that might be down to choosing the uh, most relevant ratios. Um, you know, just what is it that you're being asked to do? Make a recommendation or evaluate something. So generally, there are two things that you are either comparing or evaluating or assessing. Um, so, I mean, it could be that there are two main ratios you can focus on. It could be there are two sources of finance that you need to look at. So should a company issue shares or should it um, raise a, a debenture? Should it should it do something like that? Or um, I'm trying to think what other questions we've had. Should, um, for example, the Jasmine question, should she convert into a limited company or should she become a, a partnership? Um, so... Once you've done that, once you've worked out what it is you're asked to do, think of the two things. So think, well, what am I weighing up here? What's option one? What's option two? Um, and think about what you know about those options. So if it was, for example, um, the debenture versus the issue of shares, what do you know? What is a debenture? How does it work? Same with shares. It's permanent capital. Um, you know, is there going to be a loss of control? All that kind of stuff. The generic knowledge. That's only going to get you the AO2 marks. Um, but, you know, that that's what you need to be including as a, a sort of starting point, really. Then think about what calculations can I do with it? So again, if it's the loan, you want to be thinking, well, how much interest is going to be payable? How soon have they got to pay it off? Um, if it's shares that they're issuing, is it likely to be fully subscribed? Um, you know, again, how much are they going to raise? Um, and what level of dividends are going to need to be paid? What level of dividends have the shareholders come to expect? So that kind of thing. So there's always, I say always, there was only one example where we couldn't do any calculations. It's purely writing. Um, but there's always going to be some calculations you can do. So is it an increase in profit? Is it um, an amount of drawings that can be taken? Can you calculate the effect on a cash flow? Can you do some ratios? Um, you know, calculate the gearing, that kind of thing. So just think to yourself, what can I do? with these numbers. With paper two, often <clears throat> there'd be things like um, enough information there to be able to calculate contribution and break even point for a scenario or to do some capital investment appraisal. So just think to yourself, you know, if there's not a single number anywhere on the sheet, it's unlikely you're going to be able to do any calculations, but there will usually be some numbers. Okay, so um, yeah, so the, the always, I think, apart from one case, um, will apply. Um, and then make sure that you include those calculations in your analysis and your evaluation, which we'll talk about in a second. So option two, repeat the process for the section, uh, the second option. Um, and if you've been asked to evaluate something rather than just weigh up two options, um, for example, how efficiently working capital is being managed, you're going to need to repeat this process for all the relevant ratios and or the, re the years that you're evaluating. Um, and this brings me to the question, if you're evaluating ratios, um, you could either do it ratio by ratio or you could do it sort of year by year or if it's two different companies, you could do it company by company. There's no set way of doing it, but you will need to kind of go through um, the list. So to analyse and evaluate something, you need to take each option and kind of explain or develop the calculations you've done and the generic knowledge that you've got. So think about the consequences of each course of action. So if we go back to the loans and the, the share issue, so the share issue obviously is permanent capital, that's a good thing, whereas the loan is, is going to need to be repaid. So we're contrasting the two options there. So you can either do it that way, or you could talk about the loan first and then the shares or vice versa. Um, so you could talk about the loan, you know, how much interest is going to need to be paid, um, over how many years you could work out the total effect on liquidity, that kind of thing. Do the same for the shares, what level of dividends is going to be required. Um, so develop that chain of reasoning. So don't just kind of jot down bullet points. Okay. 
Um, identify while you're doing this any limitations. So what else would you like to know? You know, you've been given some numbers. Um, do you know what the current situation is? If you've just been given the most recent year, you could do with perhaps a couple of years beforehand to, to identify trends if you're doing ratio analysis, for example. Um, you know, what's the attitude of the person that you're advising to risk? Do you have industry averages that would be useful? Um, you know, past performance, future performance, current performance, um, the state of the economy, other things that you could could ask about or, you know, bring to the table there. So we've got an example here. Rights issue of shares is being considered to raise finance. The other option could be a, a debenture. So for AR2, explaining what a rights issue is, it's permanent capital, dividends are variable, the shares are offered to existing shareholders in line with their current shareholding. That's going to get you the AR2, AO2 marks. Calculate how much it will raise if it's fully subscribed and calculate how much would need to be paid in dividends. To get up to the AO3, the analysis and evaluation, you know, ask the question, will the rights issue be fully subscribed? That could be a limitation to the data, or it could be that there's some information given to you in the question. Um, so, you know, raise that as a question. If it's fully subscribed, everyone buys their shares, the full amount will be raised, and there'll be no new shareholders, and the ownership percentage will be the same. So point that out. But if it's not fully subscribed, then there could be issues um, you know, with dilution of ownership, problems with control, that kind of thing. Um, is the company going to make enough profit to cover the additional um, dividends? You've calculated those already. So, you know, have you got some information about the profit or do you need to ask that question? Do we know about gearing ratio, cash flows? Can we ask that question or can we work it out? OK, and then repeat the process for the op other options. So this would be, um, you know, the loan or the debenture. So we can do exactly the same thing for that. Do the calculations, um, ask the question, you know, perhaps will a lender be prepared to lend to the company? Has it got lots of existing debt? Is its gearing already getting towards 50%? Those kind of things. So we know that gearing, if it's beyond 50%, there is more debt than there is equity. That's not a good thing. Okay, so once you've done all that, and make sure you get some balance. So roughly, you know, a couple of pros, a couple of cons for each option, really well explained, we'll do it. You don't need to write loads and loads and loads. Um, but what you need to write is, you know, it needs to be succinct um, and and just relevant to the, the scenario. So to conclude your answer, you need to compare and contrast both the options, you know, think to yourself, well, okay, what have I just written? Which looks better um, for the company? What are their main concerns? Um, you know, and maybe that will lead you to the right decision. There's no right or wrong answer at this point, which is, you know, students often find that quite difficult to accept. But you just need to make a decision and clearly state. So choose the most compelling reasons for your choice and make sure that your advice is clear, justified, and fully reasoned. So I think that you know the company should go with the loan because um, you know the interest rate is low, um, the interest rate is fixed for a period of time because at the moment we're seeing rising interest rates. That will be a consideration, um, you know, and there are no issues with dilution of ownership, loss of control. Job done. So some common mistakes that you need to avoid: M don't do not under any circumstances, make bold statements that contradict each other when analysing and evaluating. I see this quite a lot. People say they should choose option one because they should choose option two because you need to say something like the reasons they should choose the shares or the reasons they should choose the loan or, um, you know, ideas in favour of one, ideas in favour of another um, rather than, you know, so just don't do that. Don't say they should choose the shares because, because directly followed by they should choose the debenture because... So advantages of the rights issue would be that it's permanent capital, blah, 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 followed by the debenture would offer the benefit of a fixed rate of interest. So we're not kind of, you know, making those contradictory statements. Avoid getting sidetracked. Stick to what you're being asked about. So don't start pulling in lots of other different bits. You know, make sure you're you're answering the question that's actually been asked. It's probably another thing I should have added to this, not the question you want to see come up. Um, avoid writing generic points that don't link specifically to the scenario. So generic stuff's OK. If it's generic stuff, we go back up here on rights issues or on debentures. Do not start putting in, you know, generic information about other things to do with with companies, um, you know, or a third alternative, because that's not what we're being asked to um, consider. So don't get sidetracked. Side and don't write generic points that don't specifically link to the scenario. Avoid rewriting the scenario. So do not waste time regurgitating the information. Sometimes you might need to kind of take little extracts from it. You know, in the scenario, it says, da, da, da. but just avoid, you know, I see sometimes people have wasted two pages and all they've done really is rewrite what's already been given and they're not really achieving any marks. 
don't keep repeating the same points um, because you'll be only rewarded once. So don't think that you know you can you can make the same points um, unless it really is necessary. Um, don't waste time clocking up loads of basic application. Remember, you can only get five marks for that. So the rest of it needs to come from an, uh, you know, the analysis and evaluation. So you really do need to hit the ground running. And if you do it well, you can kind of incorporate the AO2 and AO3 together. So make a basic point and then go on to develop it. And that will give you your chain of reasoning and get you up to the, the AO3. And when you get to the end, ask yourself, have I actually weighed up the options? So just, you know, check in again. What were the options? Have I weighed them up? Have I actually answered the question? Have I done what was required? Have I advised them? which source of finance to use? Have I made some suggestions? Have I actually evaluated the liquidity position of the company? Whatever it is you're asked to do. Have I incorporated some calculations? Make sure you show some workings. Don't just throw random numbers into the question. Have I demonstrated a logical chain of reasoning? So have I got lots of those lovely connectives in there, you know, um, leading to because of the um, effect might be blah, 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 that kind of thing. And have I highlighted some limitations of the data? And if you've done all of that, then you should be confident in a reasonable mark. So hopefully that's given you some guidance. I'm, I'm sorry I haven't got time to just kind of write lots and lots of these essays and stick them on. I'm not sure that's terribly helpful, really. Most of you, I think, will have mastered basic essay writing skills. You just need some help with the specifics of dealing with these questions. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, check out my others. Don't forget to subscribe so you get notifications of new content. Good luck for Monday.